is it is six o'clock. We've got quite a short agenda. Uh so shall we shall we, we start on it now? Yeah. Um I'll record it. We are, yeah. 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 Um so uh Mayor's announcements to start, nothing nothing really uh, uh, to report. Uh, uh still uh, a shortage of events in Flan, yeah, uh, and civic stuff to, uh, stuff to attend. Um, so not 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 much to report uh, today. Um, before we go any further, um, I'd like to give uh, a welcome, Harvey, who has joined us this evening as our second uh, youth rep, and. Uh, uh, ask Harvey if he'd like to kind of introduce himself to us. Okay, thank you very much. I'm really happy to have joined. It was during the time when we were applying that it, was, it wasn't a great time because it's in the middle of my exam, but I really wanted to do it. It was just an inconvenient time. But I'm really glad I've got the opportunity to join again. And um, my name is Harvey, and um, my. my I kind of wrote th some things down for what my the way I would apply, and my main interest was because I'm still in school that I'll be able to. I'm the head boy at Dinner Spran. I'll be able to use the structure of like the school council to get the voice of like all years across, and that was my main pitch. Yeah. <laughs> That's brilliant. That's good. That's great, and that will be that will be a, a welcome voice uh, for us in terms of kind of decisions and stuff so thank you very much for that welcome shay um yeah i was about to give your apologies uh but uh, here you are um, <laughs> right so uh is there any uh, any statements from the public have we got many public have we got some well i'll ask them to try bring them up and we can ask again and then if not we'll pop them all back down so anybody want to say anything Obviously not. No. Okay. Thank you. Uh, declarations of interest. Uh, apologies, Chairman. We've got apologies for council. Oh, sorry. Apologies. Had an issue in work. He's had to stay on. So. Yeah. Who's that? Say again. Sorry. Councillor Carroll. He's got problems. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. Had to stay on. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, declarations of interest. No, thank you. Uh, to authorise the minutes of the previous meeting held on the 15th of June as a correct record. Has anybody got any observations or comments? John? Record. Yeah, but, uh, you'd like to propose it, John, seconded by uh, Bob. Uh, anybody not in favour? Okay, thank you. Everybody in favour? Thank you. Uh, financial matters, which is the reason that we're here tonight. Um, at first sight, just because I, I did have a, uh, I a message from somebody. Uh, at first sight, it looks as though we've only got one agenda item, but uh, the the two on the side, which is in English, have been collapsed together. So uh, the first one is town cat town hall emergency repairs, suspension of standing orders, and financial regulations. Uh, legal costs. Off you go, Gareth. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I think the report is quite self-explanatory. Uh, we've got this leak that appeared or got worse, should we say, during lockdown and um, has resulted in filling one of the light panels with water. Uh, made asset management aware and obviously um, uh, thanks to Councillor uh, Paddy, who vol voluntary did a, 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 an excellent job doing the roof survey with a drone. Uh, we managed to get those pictures off to Rob Chambers, who was like our go-to conservation architect that we've worked with. And immediately Rob and came out and his wife, when I say the team, it's his man and wife team. They've both, both been out to inspect the roof space and they've ascertained uh, where they believe the ingress of water is. Uh, when the asset management uh, committee considered it. We were co conscious that obviously we've had to isolate the electrics immediately because of the danger. Um, fortunately, none of the chairs that have been reupholstered 
for the balcony were back in place, otherwise that could have been a double disaster. So they're still um, unavailable. And obviously we want to try and get the, the hall back as soon as possible to full functioning. Uh, because if, if things do improve and we can increase our, our numbers, uh, if things lift in terms of social distancing, it would be disappointing if we've got 100 chairs not available. There's also the fact that uh, we are in the summer and our experience in the past when we went out to tender, it did take a long time. So the, the asset management activity were keen to move to this at speed. So as I said, we utilise the professionalism of uh, Chambers Conservation and they've come up with a solution to um, which detailed in 2.7 uh, where they would contact uh, Chambers and a few of the other, sorry, the Grosvenor and a few of the other contractors they've worked with but well, were bid for the works in the past to see what they could do, use the tenders we received in the past as a baseline and using general figures from obviously uh, scheduled rates that they know at the moment to come up with a price uh, to allow us to proceed as soon as possible. Um, to allow us to do that, clearly it's, as you can see, that they're quoting the figure that's going to be probably more than it was last time for the Western rules, and that was some £33,000 uh, exclusive of that. So obviously it's above our £25,000 ceiling where we you know, have to go to tender and get, to get tenders in. However, we can, in case of emergency, suspend our standing orders and subsequently our financial regulations to facilitate the emergency works. I've done a risk assessment and I think it's quite clear to say if we don't do anything, there's a potential of more water coming in, more damage, potentially more damage to the electrics, possible fire even, we just don't know, things could short out. Um, and then obviously we, we've, we've got a bigger job to fix than we have. Um, and therefore, the, on balance, the risk of not doing something outweighs the risk of, uh, of you know, having to do with the process, the long-winded process in some respects of tendering, which could take a long time. So therefore, I think it's, it's fairly uh, obvious that to proceed with haste on this is the way forward. And therefore, the recommendation is that, um, uh, if I find it, make sure I say the right one. Uh, first of all, you note the risk assessment uh, on this and the, the matters to mitigate risk. Suspend standing orders 18C financial regs lem B through to lem 1 to facilitate the emergency repairs and then appoint chambers to carry on with the work, which is what the uh, asset management are keen to do so that we can broadcast this as soon as possible. Turning. Okay, thank you. Uh, anybody got any comments? Councillor Haddy. Just a very quick one. Can I just remind councillors that we're not discussing whether or not to spend the money. It's all, that's already been sorted out. Mm -hmm. This is to suspend standing orders and financial regulation. And I have great yeah. pleasure in, in proposing that we accept those, those recommendations. Anybody like to second that? Thank you, Councillor Grinley. Uh, anybody not in favour? Of the okay, motion. Excuse me, excuse me, Chair. Could I just ask a question of the clerk before we get yeah. to the uh, recommendation? Um, it concerns me that uh, we haven't done anything prior to now. I understand that um, this was becoming noticeable last year. Can the clerk shed any light as to why it, um, we didn't start doing something last year, please? Thank you. Uh, well, um, the, the extent of this. I'll, I'll, I'll jump back a year prior to that we did the works on the um, on the the area above the balcony uh, which had a major leak towards the back tower before um, early on in lockdown this wasn't as noticeable it was a small patch which obviously got worse but if um, well, sorry sorry to be rude you weren't a councillor then so you couldn't have recalled although you may have seen it uh, through the um, online meetings that we had to obviously be careful on our, our um, expenditure last year in view of the, you know, the pandemic. So we did hold back on certain expenditure and then obviously another project came along where we also had to safeguard the funds in case we had to fund that project. And as it transpired, that project didn't uh, come to the fore, but that money has obviously gone now into reserves. So we've been able to bolster our asset reserve and our, our general reserve, if you recall, we discussed that last last um, last month 
Um, and I know Councillor had his completely correct, it's not about the funding, but there is now 34,600 in reserve. And what with um, the project fund, which unfortunately is a bit less than it was last year, there's 20,000 in project. We could probably keep back about uh, 5,000 from repairs. And if you recall, we're not going to spend as much on um, non-domestic rates. So about another 5,000 is available there. And there may be little, little bits if we have to elsewhere. So unless it's ridiculously higher, um, then um, I don't see there's a problem. In fact, I could buy with an update, just read you something I had today because Chambers were conscious of the meeting. Um, they, they, put, they met with a major, uh, major partner of Grosvenor. Uh, they have adequate availability for the works, so they can move on as soon as possible onto the breeder price. Um, there'll be some inflation on certain material costs due to a lack of availability after the pandemic. But material costs should be relatively small compared to those of scaffolding and labour. So it's not really a lot of slates, it's more lead work and whatever. Um, they hopefully to um, issue draft uh, costings if you're happy to not have a draft and schedule the works by the end of the week uh, if we're happy tonight to proceed and then we'll use draft information to, to come back with detailed costings to come back to council draft asset management to approve hopefully within the budget we've got okay thank you Gareth so we, we have a thank sorry you, Kirk. Yeah, could I put a supplementary please um, yes uh, in light of this information I think uh, basically I think we all know what I'm getting at if we'd have done started doing something last year perhaps the damage might not have been as great you know with the going through a winter without doing any repairs to it and maybe uh, my personal view a solitary lesson to us to not use budgeted monies uh, uh, for other projects which haven't been budgeted for and that's all I want to say yes. on that matter. Yes. Uh, I, 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 um, thank, thank you Chair. I just thank you, thank you Stuart. We, kind of where we, we are where we are and where we're talking about uh, the situation oh, okay. at the minute. We need, we need, to, um, need to take care uh, of what we do. Uh, uh, we have a proposal. Is there anybody against the proposal? Thank you very much. Um, and Slangothlan Recreation Ground uh, uh, Trust. Uh, sorry, you just switched on your copies. I don't know what's happened there. Mine's okay. Uh, it's actually legal costs, Slangothlan Recreation Ground Trust. Again, by way of background, possibly for some of the youth that are present as well, because they won't know. Uh, the recreation ground, um, going right back, obviously was down where the railway was. But when the Railway Act came in, they uh, took away the town's recreation ground for the railway. And therefore, compensatory land was provided by the railway in the grounds of the recreation ground, where it currently stands next door to Dinbren High School, uh, Dinnersbrand High School and Dinbren Road. Hmm. Uh, that was presented to a trust, uh, the Sangrofton Recreation Browns Trust. Uh, initially, it was, um, um, I don't know, I talked about it earlier. Margaret Pierce Jenkins was a trustee and a solicitor. John might be able to jump in and remind me. Um, it's Charles Richards, it's Charles Richards, and, and latterly Dudley Richards. Yeah, Dudley Richards. Now, obviously, Dudley has gone. Uh, Margaret was still around, was the trustee. And um, we have been, uh, there was, shall I say, a, a gentleman's agreement, possibly would be the best word, going back to the 70s, where we resolved to maintain and manage the land. Uh, we formalized that a couple of years back uh, when uh, Councillor Adams was chair. Uh, and we re redeveloped the memorandum of understanding between ourselves and the Recreation Ground Trustees, primarily to make sure we had an up to date document to allow us to insure the property or the land, or have it adequately insured and covered. Uh, it was on the advice of insurers that we should have a more up to date arrangement to safeguard it. So that memorandum has been entered into, and then as a consequence of that, we, we resolved that we would continue to support the trustees to get them on a better footing. Um, and we come up with a new constitution, which now has three um, uh, first trustees, as you can see, Simon Denton, who's the chairman, Dr. Jane Green, and Jamie Roberts from Dinner Brown. And then that has ex officio members, uh, Councillor Shemley and Councillor Miles, our chair and vice chair or deputy mayor and deputy mayor. 
We've been trying to uh, find the deeds. Um, the deeds were lodged with a gentleman, a Mr. Stubbins, a Mr. Peter Stubbins, and I discovered the details of Mr. Stubbins on the file. We, about 18 months ago, first made contact with Mr. Stubbins, who assured us that the deeds were in a strong room in the offices in London. Uh, however, um, having said, well, we would pay to have them copied and sent, they never materialised. So then we asked GHB to move forward on this to try and ascertain uh, where they were and what we could do. Uh, the new company, Chris Pemberton, whatever, has obviously taken over all the the, the uh, caseload of the various companies they've absorbed and they have now categorically assured us they cannot find any trace of any file whatsoever relating to the Middletons and the original uh, transfer of the land. Uh, that causes a bit of a problem in that um, we can't, the land isn't registered and we can't register the land uh, without the trust title deeds. Um, as a consequence, and again, GHB have been doing this uh, pro bono up to now, uh, they have suggested that uh, the only way forward is to re-register the land through the land registry, which can be a quite complicated business and does need professional sort of conveyancing type uh, people to put that through and it involves a lot of what's already been done, but going around double checking all the files, all the documentation to, to ensure uh, who's, who owns the land as it were. The big issue is, well, there's a couple of big issues. First of all, the biggest issue is without having the deed reg or the land registers and a title deed in our possession, uh, the, re the trustees can't um, prove ownership as it were and therefore trespass is an issue. So if anybody gets onto the land and you know, we can't get rid of them, uh, without the title deed, it'd be difficult to go through the legal process of removing people if they um, um, are on site. And this did, did happen a couple of years ago, if you remember, before <coughs> they vacated the site before we got to that position. Um, Secondly, as well, it's also a bit of a difficult position having a, a legal identity without the deed and then obviously um, making sure that the new governing document ties in with the actual deed document. And then obviously setting up the trustee and the trustees in a more stable way. You know, they don't have a bank account, so I'll come on to that in a minute. So establishing a bank account and taking everything forward. So there's a number of reasons why this is so important to be done. Um, clearly, the trustees have no money. Uh, we have debate about how to raise funds, uh, perhaps crowdfunding and others and events. But there is a need, I think, that, uh, to desperately try and work out how uh, they can raise funds going forward. But in the interest of the sort of memorandum, we have agreed to support them and uh, get it on a better footing, shall we say. And what we're suggesting, and you know, as I say, the mayor and deputy mayor were there at the as trustees at the last meeting. We, you know, we identified that we've not made a donation to the establishment this year, and therefore the, uh, the proposal is that we donate the money that would have gone to the establishment from the donations cost centre to the costs of securing the title deeds. When I say donate, we can't physically send it to them if they don't have a bank account. So in essence, we would be charged and in lieu of that donation, we would pay the fees. The chair has negotiated a fixed cost price with um, GHP of that value. And we made it clear that's all we've got. And I believe that includes that, but it doesn't matter to us because it was just for paying it. Uh, and therefore the recommendation, as I say, in the spirit of the um, memorandum is to support them by covering the costs of the lead, covering the legal costs to get the title deeds finally registered with the land registry for Wales. Okay, thank you. Anybody got any observations or comments? John, please. please. Oh. Uh, the, the, um, recently, the, the, uh, the trust received a grant of £5,000. Uh, would it be possible to transfer some of that across? since we've got no money either. Well, they, they didn't receive a grant. They received 4,500 towards a cost of 13,000 pound project. So they couldn't accept the money because they couldn't go ahead with the project. 
Oh, I see. Right. So they've got no money. Um, okay. Uh, that was to fence. That was a, a Puget Sands application to fence the whole area with modern right. fencing to match what's on the corner of Dinbren Road. But because we, we, you know, we weren't given, we were doing the full amount there, they go ahead and done it. But obviously, with no money, uh, so there's no okay. money there. Right, thank um, you. Okay. Councillor Davis has his hand. Yeah, Mr. Okay. Councillor Davis. Thank, thank you, Chair. Yeah, and uh, my um, immediate reaction to to this is, um, we're not an open checkbook. We are the guardians of public money. We can't just go throwing money uh, uh, willy nilly like I've seen being done pre previous to me being a councillor. So my first reaction is. Have we pushed the solicitors who said that the deeds are in a strong room somewhere and say to them, hey, hang on a minute, uh, you were um, guardians of these things. Um, do you not think that you should be paying to, to, to have this sorted out? That's, that's one, one comment. Uh, it's a rhetorical question because none of us know the answer, but I, I think it was it's still worth pursuing. Secondly, um, we as a town council seem to be hornswaggled a little bit uh, in as much as we seem to be the de facto provider of funds. I have talked to a couple of the uh, uh, of the a previous uh, trustee and to a, uh, a, a current trustee and I've said basically um, I think that in this case as the clerk has said we as a town council have several choices but the the best choice of it is the trustees need to um, get their act together they need to get a business plan they need to take control of this if they if they want to be trustees of this well they need to act as trustees and it was said in the nicest possible way to them and uh, they understood this so i think if we supply this money this is the last chance um last chance saloon we we give them the money from uh, the monies identified by the clerk and make it quite clear there is provisional on them coming up with a business plan to make this a trustee um, thing work properly they will need to have a look at getting some income from somewhere um, I know I understand there is some and it is used for grass cutting etc 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 but we need to sit down and say hang on a minute uh, yes here's the money this is it uh, and then afterwards the trustees should work as trustees and they should run it themselves and run it on a um, profitable basis so they don't have to keep coming to us for dosh thank you very much Councillor Hadi. Very interesting to hear Councillor Davis's views. However, it has been an ongoing problem this for many years. Um, and uh, uh, he speaks as if he was speaking on behalf of the council in his statement just there, which isn't the case. We, we've spent a long time over many years um, sorting out the trusteeship of this organisation. And as the town council was the de facto first uh, to which the trustees uh, came when there was a problem uh, we had over many years negotiated an eventual outcome whereby the, the town mayor and the deputy town mayor were trustees uh, of, of the thing we understand that in the long term they need to raise their own cash they need to be able to um, uh, supply their own finances but that's not the subject of what we're talking about tonight tonight we're talking about defraying the legal cost of ensuring that the land uh, is properly secured so and on, that basis, on that basis I, I think we should proceed as recommended okay we have a proposal from councillor hardy that we uh, proceed anybody like to second that uh, before we go, Chair, I did make an no, amendment. No. With, with the, uh, I did make an amendment, Chair. Should we vote on the amendment first? Uh, can you can you remind us of your amendment, please, Councillor yeah, Davis? Uh, yeah, the amendment was that um, with the proviso that uh, I've forgotten what I said. I don't. I don't um, recall no, that anybody seconded it. Sorry, sorry. Say that again, Chair. Can you can you can you make your proposal? Then we'll see. Uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll um, we'll put it to find a seconder. You know, chair. Yeah, it yeah. helps. From what I noted down here, I think Councillor uh, Davis wished to say that the payment should be made on the proviso that we get assurances or um, some other word, perhaps assurances that uh, the um, trustees 
uh, move to preparing a business plan to look at the cost implications and ways of fundraising in the future so that they're not, you know, necessarily coming back or ultimately falling on us to make payments. I mean, there's nothing stopped them approaching us to give them a grant. That's a different matter. But um, I think that was what the gist was, Chair. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Chair, uh, Clark, Mr. Clark. That's my uh, amendment. So, uh, there, is a, uh, there is a proposal as just described by Gareth. Is there a seconder to that? I'm sorry, Councillor Davis, no seconder. Go back to the original proposition, which is Councillor Haddy. Anybody like to second that? Yeah, thank you, Councillor Lube. Anybody against? Right, thank you very much. All right, okay, ladies and gentlemen, a, a short meeting. Uh, look forward to seeing you again in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah, uh, have a nice evening.